Hello YouTube, it's Hyan here with Hobbies and Man once again, and today we're going to be doing another uh, mod review. Today we're going to be looking at Shaman King, uh, specifically the first 26 chapters, which are the Coming to Tokyo arc, and um, it's written by Hiroyuki Take. Uh, it's published by Panini Manga. The ones I have are from Panini Manga. I'll show them to you in a minute. Um, the demographic is Shonen. This used to be on the Shonen Jump uh, magazine, but then there's a falling out between the mangaka and the company, so... Uh, the manga sold his rights to Kodansha, so Kodansha publishes it now. And in the U.S., uh, you're most likely to be able to buy the Kodansha editions, which are big, brick-looking kind of three-in-ones, uh, which are not too bad. My understanding is that they're okay, but if I remember correctly, they don't have color pages. They don't have any uh, little knickknacks or anything, you know, worth the effort uh, or worth the time, money in them, uh, which is why I went with the Mexican editions. Uh, and the genres are urban fantasy, supernatural, and action. It does have an adaptation. There's a new version of the anime on Netflix, which actually moves through this part of the arc in like four episodes. So it's like really, really fast. It gets really quickly into the shaman fight. So yeah, uh, let me show you the books and then we'll talk about the premise and everything else. So uh, it's the first three volumes and uh, in the Mexican edition, it's actually two in one editions. So here's volume one of the omnibus which collects the first two volumes, which is represented by these covers. Uh, this one also comes with a bookmark and this new content bond style. And uh, in order to preserve the original artwork, it comes with these postcards that have the artwork on each side, corresponding to each uh, cover for each volume that's in here. Um, it also comes with a, with a what's it called? A, dust jacket there you go just in black with really nice colors and uh the front looks like this in green the back looks like red and the uh, spine is in the main cover color the color pages here are in this kind of like normal paper with ink style instead of the comic book paper uh style which is like the the shiny paper i think that's for photocopies i think that's what it's called and there's a few different bits of color pages here and there to correspond with the color pages that came out in the magazine, I think. Uh, however, this isn't like a constant bond edition. This is literally just volumes one and two combined into one book, plus uh, some additional uh, episodes slash side stories slash uh, chapters here and there to, um, to flesh out the story more, uh, thanks to the manga being able to re-release it in his in like his vision right so uh, it's pretty good it's pretty interesting uh so what, what i was saying though is that because it's not a constant bond it doesn't have those red tinted or orange tinted uh color pages that you could see in something like the fist of the north star uh volumes or the um what's the other one uh the jojo volumes it's only going to be these types of color pages and yeah so that's book one the so first two volumes and then the third volume is is is, uh, is part of the second book that i have here let me show you so here's book two uh yellow in the front blue in the black uh, in the back and this is horror horror i think and his sister and uh again it has a postcard so here's the front here's the back and that corresponds to volumes three and four and uh the front is gold Mech is blue, again. And uh, I don't think volume three has any color pages. Let me see. No, I don't think so. It The color pages for this book start on volume three. So let me go there, just so I can show you. There's some little extras at the back of this book uh, before the beginning of... Um, second volume so yeah the chapter ends and then this is the start of volume two with color pages as you guys can see so yeah um that's it that's the mexican edition if you guys want a more in-depth look at the first book uh you guys can check and go check out my shaman king uh first impressions review i think i did i, I do think i did it over this version of the book and not the original. I don't remember, honestly, though. So double check that. If not, uh, look at my um, 
at my different uh, haul videos. Uh, it should be the either the December ones or the July ones. I don't remember which year, but um, you should find the Shaman King stuff there because these are Mexican editions. So I only buy them in July when I go to Mexico or in December when I go visit my family as well. So yeah, anyway, uh, back to the review. We have volumes one and half of volume two, which is the first three volumes of, this, of the original series to talk about, which again is the coming to Tokyo arc chapters one through 26. So the premise of this arc is that Yo Asakura, who is a lonely boy from a long line of spiritualists, uh, wants to become Shaman King so that he can live a life of peace and and, pro and leave, live alone and happy and, you know, not, with no worries. Um, and we follow his early adventures as the world around him is built up so that we can have our big tournament arc in volume two. And, uh, we, we mostly get to see him going through some early, simple, like Scooby-Doo style adventures where he just goes somewhere, finds a ghost, and then helps the ghost move on kind of stuff, uh, which is pretty fun. Uh, but it does eventually turn into a battle shonen later on. And I do think that it is a battle shonen from the very beginning, but uh, it is very similar to Bleach where early on, it's mostly about like exercising spirits and moving on and helping them move on to the next world and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really fun. The plot line here is uh, pretty simple. We get introduced to Yo and Manta and Amadimaru or Ami, Amidamaru and uh, Ryu, who is a uh, older delinquent type. He has a giant toupee and he's really fun. I like him a lot as a character. We also get introduced to Anna later on, but um, she's not really that important in this part of the story. I would definitely say she's a lot more important in arc two. So yeah, Yo, Manta, and uh, Ami, Ami, Ami Maru have uh, Monster of the Week adventures for a few chapters, like four or five. And then they have their first major encounter with another shaman who is Ren Tao, a Chinese uh, shaman who uh, does uh, shamanistic things in, the very, in a very similar fashion to Yo. So he is, directly set up as Yo's first major antagonist, and actually he is more or less his dark rival. Uh, he is directly uh, opposed to Yo, and he is going to become a very, uh, bigger character later on. So Ren Tao uh, has a spirit uh, companion, and his spirit companion is Basan, who is a major uh, general from 1800 years or so ago. I don't remember exactly the timeline, but he's an ancient Chinese general where Yo Hazami Tamaru, who is a 600 year old samurai uh, of the highest caliber, right? So uh, they face off, they have a battle and a lot of this battle is actually used for uh, ex exposition and teaching us about battles between shamans. We learn about integration or um, what's it called in English? The, the soul rave, rave soul, something like that. Um, where they combine and they do the, the, you know, basically the same thing as, uh, residents and soul eater or Bankai in bleach. They do the thing where they, uh, align themselves with their spirits and are able to, um, access their power, uh, much better. Uh, this first technique is integration. So, uh, the shaman takes in the spirit of his, uh, spirit companion and he uses it to gain the skills of his companion. So Yo becomes a samurai, uh, Ren becomes a general or a, um, what's it called? Like a, a lancer, I guess. He has this lance with him. Um, and so they battle and it ends, I don't remember exactly how it ends, but I do think that Yo wins because Ren goes away. And then his sister, Yun Tao, shows up to battle Yo to help her brother because her brother really wants Amidamaru to join him. So, uh, yeah, I think his sister loses very definitely. I think Anna actually has a part to play in this part of the story as well. And what happens is that we learn about her family and how kind of shitty and horrible they are. They basically create these flesh golems and then force the spirit of that, uh, of that cadaver to, uh, possess it. And it's basically like a golem. It has this thing over its face that is like some scripture that forces it to maintain its shape and house its own soul after death. And it's really interesting. 
The character that she has is this guy called Pyron Lee, who, or Byron Lee, I can't remember exactly, but it's like a Bruce Lee kind of character. And in the Spanish versions, I do think that they do call him like Lee Bruce or Bruce Lee or something like that. And in the English, according to the Wikipedia page or the, the fandom uh, wiki page, uh, it is Byron Lee. So if, if there's any problems with how I m mention certain techniques and stuff like that, it's because I read it in Spanish, I'm trying to supplant it with the English knowledge, and uh, sometimes it doesn't actually match with the anime or with the original Viz translation of the story. So uh, it is what it is. But she loses, and um, then there's this old enemy of um, uh, Amidimaru's past from 600 years ago who takes over Ryu in a, a weird situation, and he decides to uh, use Ryu's body to go battle Yo. And so we have this kind of like thief ninja versus honorable samurai kind of battle and it ends in a very more like an idealistic kind of uh situation where they realize that this uh, samurai thief guy or sorry not samurai this like ninja thief guy uh actually uh is is basically just lonely and his hatred and his life and everything he stood for um was for kind of like a good reason but also was twisted negatively in his own darkness and his own sadness and that all he needed was someone to trust him and to show him some appreciation. And so Yo does this because that's more or less Yo's style. And this allows the character, uh, the character Tokagero to leave Ryo's body and also to kind of pass on to the afterlife to some extent, um, which is really good. I really enjoy that. So, yeah. And then the last chapter is the uh, Harbinger Stars, which are these like comet things that pass over the earth and so it signals the start of the next shaman fight every 500 years and so uh that's where the 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 arc ends at the end of chapter 26 and overall it was a really good uh, enjoyable time i really liked it i had a lot of fun with um with this story i like the world building that happens i like the way that exposition is is, is given to us i like the characters a lot manta is really fun yo is great uh, Amade Maru is a really cool character. Ana is fun. You know, overall, I really enjoy all of these characters uh, and stuff like that. So in terms of characters, we do have quite a bit of them. Uh, and I do want to talk about them in more depth. So here we go. So Yo is the son of the uh, Asakura family. He is the youngest living descendant of this family. And he um, is very powerful in terms of his shamanistic ability. And he wants to be shaman king more or less so that his family will leave him alone and so that he can wish for peace and 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 uh and uh an easygoing life because he doesn't really want to be upheld to these uh, crazy standards because he is the the last scion of this uh crazy powerful spiritual family in japan right so yeah monta we don't know too much about he seems to be a normal character early on and he's just this kid who somehow manages to have spiritual uh, ability and so he can see spirits but he's not a very particularly strong or you know powerful character he's more or less the everyman that yo would have been in any other story so that we can have exposition dumps and more dumps through a character's conversation instead of just being told straight up hey this is the thing right so uh, he fun functions really well he has a really good purpose we have amadi maru who is the samurai uh, and he has a buddy called Nosuke, who is his uh, friend who forged the blade that he loves, which is Sar Saru Same, I think is what it's called. And um, we have their story early on in the in the in the arc, and then it comes back and gets explained a lot more later at the end of the story. And I really like these characters a lot. I also really enjoy that um, Amadi Maru is like um a ronin at the beginning and then he finds yo and he decides that yo is a shogun and so now uh amadi maru is a full-fledged samurai with a lord and it's really good stuff i like that a lot ryu is fun he's this delinquent kind of shitty character initially but then you get through the story a bit more and you learn that he's actually a really nice guy a really meaningful guy he just doesn't have any place to call his own and he's searching for it and so he takes in all of these ruffians all of these guys that don't have any uh place to be themselves and they become their own little family together so he's kind of like frankie 
uh, in the Water 7 arc where he has his family of delinquents that are the dismantlers of the uh, of the ship. So I really like that. I think it's fun. It's a really cool character trope, uh, character style too. And overall, Ryu is just so suave and cool. He just looks really awesome. So I'm really looking forward to him becoming a more prevalent character later on. Then we have Ren Tao, Ba San, Yun Tao, and Pyron Lee, who again, I mentioned they're these uh, two young uh, Chinese shamans. I think they're Chinese. I'm pretty sure they're Chinese. Uh, and they also come from a special shamanistic family. And um, Ren kind of wants to do his own thing. And Jun is more in line following her family's kind of uh, ethics. And uh, she tries to rein in Ren, but Ren kind of does his own thing. And uh, it's pretty good. I really enjoy these characters as well. And then the last over uh, leftover characters are Anna, who is Yo's um, betrothed. And she's also from a special family. And she is the number one disciple for this one lady. I think it's Yo's mom. So she is given uh, the duty of marrying Yo. And they are in love with each other to an extent. Um, and they will continue to be... Uh, you know, a relationship later on. So it's, it's really good. I like them as well. And Takeguro, or Takegero, who is the um, the guy that takes over Ryu in the last little segment of the arc. So, yeah, in terms of world building, we have Shamans, which is a general title, and it basically refers to anyone that uses magic, specifically if that magic has to deal with spiritual powers. And um, we don't learn too much about them here. We do know that there's Chinese Shamans and Japanese Shamans, and uh, that even within a specific uh, country, shamans kind of work differently because Anna is a priestess and Yo is just a general shaman. Um, but we do learn later on that there's more different types of shamans depending on what they do. And generally, it's just a title meant for people that you know practice the spiritualistic uh, magics, right? So cool stuff. Uh, we learn about integration. We learn about these uh, Taoist uh, golems. Uh, we don't learn too much else other than that. And we, of course, also learn of, of the title Shaman King, who is the kind of the, the coming of the greatest shaman user, of the greatest wizard. And uh, they will have to fight these people uh, that are other contenders for the title. And once they receive the title, they're going to be able to integrate the greatest spirit of all, which is some sort of like God equivalent uh, spirit. And they will be able to... Uh, be granted a wish uh, for whatever it is that they want. Yo wants to live a peaceful life, so his wish is going to be to be left alone, basically. But, you know, other characters have other motivations, and it's good stuff. I like it. In terms of artwork, it is a bit odd at the beginning, but it gets significantly better very quickly, and it's really enjoyable by the end of the 26th uh, chapter and starting into the 27th and onward, it gets even better. It's really, really good. I do know that some pieces of art were fixed later on. They were updated by the mangaka in his current art style. I don't know which ones they are. I just know that they are scattered throughout the book. And generally, I don't really notice it too much. I think the mangaka is really good at making it all kind of work within his own style in the current version and mix it with his old style. And it works really well. A lot of stuff looks really, really good. So yeah, artwork is really good. In terms of fan service, I don't really think there's any. I don't remember any. So I don't think that there's anything. I think that so far it's really good. Um, I do know that some uh, moments here and there in the next arc do have like a tiny, 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 tiny bit of fan service. Um, but generally speaking, this first part does not at all. So feel free to check it out if you're someone that has an aversion towards uh, you know, that type of stuff. So yeah, rating wise is a four out of five. It was really, really fun, but it didn't really manage to finish, you know, like being epic. Uh, so uh, it's just a 4 out of 5. I really, really enjoyed it. I would read it again. In fact, I have read it again. And I would definitely watch the anime again. Um, so overall, really enjoyed it. It's definitely a reread uh, for sure at some point later on in, uh, down the line. And yeah, they don't really have anything else to say. So um, yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. And see you guys later.